Syrian captivity are an old number. They decided to break away because I'll put into the context of the scriptures that they couldn't keep the local laws of their forefathers in the land that they were held captives. So the, this is what he's going to get into. Salamanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive and he carried them out of the waters, over the waters, and some came into another land. Right, so we're talking about the captivity and some that came into another land. He came over, he took the people, and he, he took them back. He told you that he traveled over waters. Mm -hmm. what, what book is this? This is, um, this is the, one of the, this is, there's 14 books that the Protestant church took out. Come on, let's give it up one more time. Already, this was the Bible, this is how it was before we got the newer ones. Now the newer ones only have the new in the Old Testament. Yes. Prior to that, it was all one Bible with the 14 books. It was, books keep on moving. There was a Bible commission that, that, that got together. We have the seven hills, seven hills, early, early 1800s. Took these the pocket right. fit right in the middle of the Bible because well, we're still books. waiting for y'all to come to the DJ booth, but we're not going to be able to right piece now, it together. Because see, the Bible the is the people get it spooky, you think of something that's there. You missed the Bible filled with this number of jumbo of fixed stories. No, this is something that really, really happened. It's very, very fiction and it is our history book. Not only is it our history book, but it's 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 a it's written in codex homies and it tells us how to live our life and so, how to ourselves. If you got Snapchat, if you got Instagram, if you got Facebook Live, get your phones ready. Appear on to me. Now when uh, when they were led back to captivity, they were actually free. These ten tribes the were given liberty to do yes. what they want and go where they want. So the king. They don't want to go back into the land. Of the the heathen, or the, the meaning, for the ones without laws. Even the ones without laws. You hear Gentile, Gentile, and the other nations. It's because heathens, it's the other nations that they didn't have any laws. Let's see what they got. 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 Let's see
their laws in the other so-called African, African nations. So what they said were... Okay, it says, but they took this council, meaning the ten tribes took this council yep. amongst themselves. So that means they all gathered together and they had a little dialogue and discussion about Mesopotamia. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go far forth into a further country where... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So this is that they should leave the multitude of the heathen. A multitude. This is a multitude right here. It's a new gathering of the multitude of heathen. We got to miss the people that couldn't keep the law to us. And go forth into a further country where never man finds wealth. A further country where never man finds wealth. That was just like, 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 that was just All of this land was already conquered. It's cheap. So it has to have a different meaning. So, so all this is where we would have been So they were, they were, they were in this area of precipitation. The Syrians, the Babylonians, the Jews, the Russians, the Jews, they conquered it. They conquered the Hebrews. They were all the same nations. Syria. Yeah. So that they're over here in this region. So that they have to come through here. The Euphrates runs through these regions. So it'll come, it'll shoot them out here. So they, they use the Euphrates River to come down here and it shoots them out here. And it says that they might there keep their statues which they never kept in their own land yeah. and they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river for the Most High then showed them signs for them. Do you see how that would be narrow? Come on this passage. For the Most High. The Most High God. It says for the Most High then showed them signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. In that time. So, so, so the, the signs, what they're talking about, we have how to navigate. We already circumnavigated. So the Most High God, He held still the water of the sea, we so call it the ocean now, um, right? So they passed over for through that country, there was a great, great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsenal. So, so, is that any trickery? I'm, I'm reading to you straight out of the Bible and I'm excited to read it and I'm breaking it down. This, this is what we don't get when we go to church. We don't get the history. Uh, 
use the background for the context that they can, that they can. But there's a lot of history, like, uh, there's a, a lot of misinformation that the process that we have to have to correct. What you're doing is, you actually learn history. History, history was never taught for this, by the way. Let me just tell you about a people that was a, a, a people, the people of the Bible and things like that. And, and those people are in Israel right now. And, no, because not to jump, not to jump all over the place, but if you go back into the religion, brother, or other religions, you jump back in the religion, right? Are you lost your mind? Bob, are you reading from the book? This is King James. I don't have a 1611, but this Yeah, so I don't have the pocket for it in the middle of my, my pocket for it. So, so uh, most of the chapter is 10. No, 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 no. 2 or 9, and it's, and it's, and it's 3 and 9. So this is Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. It says, I know thy works in tribulation. And poverty. Thank you. Let's give it up one more time for this amazing group right here. Works me. The things that you do to administer. Cheers and peace. Tribulation. Tribulation means you're going through something like adversity. So I know that works in, in that tribulation. Can we call it Ray Diamond to the stage at this point? This is this is a distinction or description of who the people of God would be. So being poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them will say that they are Jews and are not of the same God of Satan, the Church of Satan. What you got right here is basically telling you that those people who claim to be Jews are not Jews. The God, the God said that these people are going through tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. How are you... How are these people that are supposed to be blessed? How, are they, how, 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 how do they own and control the world, but they're going through, but they're going through tribulation and poverty? That's oxymoronic. They, 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 actually, it's not oxymoronic. It they contradicts themselves. But it says, but thou art rich. Our people are, are rich in spirit. We're rich in life, but we don't have anything. So, so, we're the people that are going through great, a great tribulation. And, um, given the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31. I wanted to read uh, the definition of horse. Uh, 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 I just want to make one point and I'll have the brother finish up with you. I'll be right back. And wrap up what he was trying to say. Oh, you got it? No, no. What? That Jeremiah. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. I, don't, I don't want to overload him. That's when we get into this. And then you can finish that. And then, you know, I'll, I'll just get back. But, um, he says, He knows the tribulation, but thou art rich. Because I was telling him, you're a rich spirit. He says, I know the blasphemy. He says, Put him in a, uh, a blasphemous activation that person is God. Keep doing things to profane, profane his name, to basically make them ashamed. I know that the last week of them was Satan or Jesus and I'm not trying to say that God is Satan. Satan was the greatest deceiver of Jesus and God on earth. That's why he knew that he took everything from us and took the whole world. They didn't carry out it. They carried out the very acts that Satan was supposed to portray. You want to give it on a plain sense and just keep it on a, a, a level playing field of just not, not getting too deep. But then right here, also, in, in these, the same book, a uh, different chapter, it, it gives you a few steps to go along with Revelation chapter 2 and 9, it's 3 and 9. It says, Behold, now when you say behold, if I, if, I if, I say, hey, if I say, behold this cell phone, I'm grabbing your attention to the cell phone. Behold, that's a sight. Look, it's saying look, or oh, listen. I'm grabbing your attention. So whenever the Bible says behold, it it's to grab the reader's attention. Or, or, or because it's, it's, it's going to get into a point that it needs you to focus on. Can I read it? No, I got it. I, thank you. I appreciate it. It says behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. Here, he's telling you again. They say they are Jews and they are not. 
That's two five steps. The Lord also says that. Usually, he says things three times. He usually says things two times. Three is just like a circle of completion. But the Lord said he asked me once, he asked me twice, but man, regardless, not. So he said, so he said, um, so they say our Jews and our not, but do lie, behold, I will make them come to worship before thy feast. And know that I love thee. Because the, the, the Lord put in subjection of his people because we sin against us. We, we were supposed to have the abundance of the, the same way that we see right we were living under the house and we were and doing what we want. The same way that we were supposed to have the abundance of the same way that we were supposed to have the abundance of the same way that we were supposed to have the abundance of the same way I see that the whole basis of this comes down to the white versus black thing because we simply disobey God. We're all his children, but we play different and vital parts. We're all his children, but he, we're the only people that God knows because he made us exactly like him. Not in the sense of having his brain, but in the sense of you looking exactly like him. His, his skin color, the eyes, the beard, I mean, we are God. We're not gods, but we are him because we're made like him. So you can pray yeah. it. What? Well, let's well, let's well, let's finish up with you, man. I didn't want to give you too much, but just kind of give you some type of understanding. You know? So it's not to tell you. Oh, yeah. So the Azra, which is a psychopedia, shows us here when we look it up online. It says the name of the land beyond the great river, far from the habitation of man, in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of restoration when the Most High is to our side of the And it says, according to Moor Edgeless, Seven minutes and 44 seconds into that movie, Columbus, who's played Columbus, and a priest is having the conversation saying, why do you want to travel to that part of the world or travel that way? And he says, because of Edges. And then the pastor, the, the, the priest says, well, Edges was a Jew. And he said, well, wasn't Christ a Jew also? And the priest said, that. So it's interesting to know that there's facts out there like that, but it's never taught in, in the Christian tradition, or it's never taught in when you're, you know, when you're learning about the Word of God. So that's why we're out here bringing it out, because as Israelites, when you find out that you're an Israelite, now we have an obligation to uphold the laws that have been And when we see our brothers and our sisters out here, we'll treat them as kings and queens. We won't treat them as some regular old ghetto ass people. We won't treat them as slum. We won't sell drugs to them. We won't, uh, you know, uh, we won't prostitute our women. We won't make music that that promotes, uh, you know, sexuality. Uh, promotes, you know, degrading our women, calling them bitches and hoes. We don't do that stuff. It's, the problem is, is that our people don't know who they are. They think we're just the lowest people in the world. And if you go to every single city throughout the world, our people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives of this of this world, they're on the bottom. As a nation of people, we are on the bottom. There's ones or twosies. There's people who made multi, you know, multi-million dollar corporations. Yes, but they have to also sort of sell out who they are. They gotta be this completely different people. You know, you gotta accustom, you gotta accustom, accustom yourself to what society wants. You. And uh, so we're out here just teaching our people that they are the Israelites of the Bible and that we're God-chosen people and that when you find that out, come back to, the, to God according to the Bible, how He told us to live and um, you know, we, we get out of what we're in. We get out of this One more thing before you go, I wanted to read this to you. This is, um, do you know the Bible? So you know Deuteronomy, who Moses is talking to during the 
Okay, so this is when Moses already took the Israelites out of Egypt, right? He, he took them away from the spirit. <laughs> well, during that time frame, he got the Ten Commandments. That's, that's, one, that's a good one too. That also. So Moses was talking to the Israelites. He freed. God sent Moses to free from Pharaoh's rulership. Right? Pharaoh had them all in slavery for over 400 years. So this is during the time of when we were in the wilderness with them. When Moses was in the wilderness with all the Israelites. Right? God calls his people. This is our verse. From Deuteronomy 7 and 6, it says, Remember who the audience is. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So a lot of, a lot of people come up and we tell our people that we are the most, you know, we are the, we are um, God's chosen people, his special people above all people. On the face of the earth, and then they call us racist. Why are you calling us racist when the most high God himself chose you to be the most racist people in the world? He says it right here. So now we're racist because we're saying, yo, you are the greatest people on the earth. You need to follow the laws that the commandments and have all these blessings. But when we read Deuteronomy 28, right here, when you read from 1 to 14, it says here, you follow everything that I tell you, you'll have all these blessings. Then when you get to 15, he says, if you don't follow all these curses, and I'll give you two curses just to show you. Let me read it for you. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments in his statutes, which I command thee this day, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now, I'm going to show you how long these curses are going to be on earth. And there, they shall be upon thee for a sign, and they, meaning these curses, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So now my question is to you, how long is forever? Forever, exactly. So now, let me read one of the so-called Judites, right? From Judah. This is showing the slave trade in the Bible. They don't teach this in Christianity, or in the churches, or... And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way, way whereof I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and for bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So when we that word Egypt. Now, if we're in Jerusalem already in captivity, right? And there's no ships. We don't need to take no ships to get to Egypt because Egypt, you can literally walk to Egypt from Jerusalem. Go on to the map. You know? So there's a different meaning. So now when we go to Exodus 22, the Bible teaches us what Egypt means. Okay. So I'm gonna be honest. I'm having like a little technical difficulties with this mic. And God spoke all these words, saying, "I am the Lord thy God, and which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage." So now, because. We can literally walk from our captivity into Egypt. We just walked out of so We can go back into Egypt by walking, right? So now we understand that Egypt means bondage. So when we read it with the clarity, it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into bondage again with ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning, you won't see your land anymore. You won't see it anymore. Because now we're in a whole different world. They took us to the city. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies and for bondmen, which means slave men, and bondwomen, which means slave women. And no man shall buy you. So when we take this verse and we put it to society now in modern history, you are the only people that went on ships into slavery. So called black suspenders and Native Americans. Like I said, it's the 
have that understanding. Is that clear? That's good. So now you know that you're an Israelite. If you, you can Google it and kind of do some more research to get more, you know, like clear. And um, once you have that, you know that you have a responsibility now is to follow the most that is the commandments of the most high. And they're all through these, through these books here. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. All of these books are the law. They call it the Torah. And, um, and uh, so you go through them and learn how to follow them. And they're not hard. Uh, we make them seem really hard. We make them seem difficult. And, uh, we're following them right now. You know, we keep our fringes. We don't go bald. And if we do that, we have faith and hope that what the Bible says is going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. That's why we do this. Because we want to get the results of God said when we keep this law. So I want to, can I read one more to you? Yeah, what a church. Because, uh, you got to see my inner we're not on the wall, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. We're on the great for my question will be to you. The answer to that is um, how were we justified? Uh, how were we justified to God in the Old Testament? How were we made righteous to God in the Old Testament? When we broke the law, when we broke the law. A sacrifice, right? So what was Jesus in the New Testament? So he was sacrificed for our sins, but it didn't do away with sin. So there's still sin. Do you know what sin is? According to the Bible? Uh, according to the Bible, the Bible definition. But what is sin to you? What do you think sin is? Sin is uh, anything that you do that goes against God's will. Okay. It's a half, halfway, right? Halfway, that is true, but it goes against the will of God. Um, what was the verse for sin? I think it's John. Um, hey, I got one more. Three, three four. four. First John, three, four. I gotta get hood though, because I'm all the way hood. I have a mark here, but I've been using it for so long that I've been going away. Feeling real hood tonight. All that nice, push it to the side. Cause they know the lady gets fired Went to wash a trick, straight wipe it down When it's all said and done, I fix my crown For the sin is talking transgression of the law, what is that? I was not 1 John 3, 4 Oh, 1 John 1 John 1 John, yeah Thank you, I have it here, but I have it here And if you know me, then you know I keep the heat Ask about me, what? Ask about me Okay. I keep the bag of all these. So, sin, according to the Bible, is committed sin, transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So, the Bible gives us the definition of what sin is. So, Christ was made a sacrifice, right, for our sins because we what? Transgress the law. So, now. Your question was, we're under grace, right? We're only under grace. Grace is so that we have time to come back to the laws of the most high. Let me show you that. Because grace teaches us something too. What grace teaches. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. That's who? Right? God, that was Jesus. That was grace. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So that's what grace taught us. Yahweh Shai taught us to follow the Lord. To keep the Lord. And let me show you that. Okay, let's go to the mouth of Yahweh Shai himself. 
he teaches us that we did not come to do away with the law. In the south, the These are the, in um, other Bibles, these word letters will be in the Bible. So all right, it says here from uh, chapter 5 and 17, he says, Think not, don't even think it, that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy. So in the same verse, he tells us twice that he did not come to destroy the law out of his own mouth. Right? But it says, but to fulfill. Now I want to read why we keep these um, fulfilled. What does the word fulfill Okay. So with that understanding, does it mean no, right? But most people, when they read that, they'll say, you see, we can't even fulfill the law. We don't have to do it no more. That word can come does not mean to go away. So now it says, this is why we keep the, even the least commandments. It says here, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach man so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to be called great in the kingdom of heaven by showing people that they need to keep their beard, they're not, they're not supposed to shave their heads, they're supposed to keep fringes on their own, we got to keep the Sabbath, you know, we're not supposed to buy, sell, um, cook, clean, any, any type of works on the Sabbath except works of God. And what we're doing is works of God on the Sabbath, which is what God, what Yahweh did when he um, was telling the Pharisees, like, why didn't you save uh, uh, a sheep on the Sabbath? You know what I mean? So anything that works of God, we can do on the Sabbath, not break it. But, um, so I want to teach them. I want to teach that, um, what else? I want to teach women that they need to dress modestly. Because they not wear pants. The law says not to wear pants. We're not supposed to wear pants. We're supposed to wear skirts. So I want to teach these things to our people so that I could be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And it's not hard to keep these, these small commandments. You know? um, is that good? Clear? Got it? Good, brother. Thanks for staying in. Appreciate the knowledge. Yeah, on there they have our information. Um, we have our YouTube channel, I believe. Rise of the Chosen. You can find us on Facebook there. And Nicole, do we have um, the YouTube channel on here? Not on this one. Not on this one, right? Not on this one. Well, find us? Daniel Abiyah. Rodney. 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 Okay. Nice to meet you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom. Good, another edification session. We have a great time here at the Juneteenth, um, 16th, and it's all about giving honor and glory to the Most High God. All praise. So, see you guys later. All right.